So right now we have our 1970 burnt orange Cuda. We've done all the pre-paint, the final fit, everything looks great on it. On this particular car, the underside of it actually gets painted. It's kind of a dark gray, greenish color that it goes. So I'm getting the whole bottom sanded out. Then I'll go in and uh, paint the dark gray on it, bring it back out of the booth, uh, get the outside all sanded out, masked up, ready to go, spray the outside of the car, and then we'll let the overspray, kind of like what you see now, kind of just go over it. So it won't look that good, um, but that's the way the factory did it on this particular car, and that's how the customer wants to keep it. So once it's all cut and buffed, I'll roll it over to Dave. Uh, Mark will put the stripe on, and then this car's out of here. Having cars like this kind of helps pick up the flow for us even, because we're not doing as much, but uh, having it out of here gets another one out the door and has it sitting pretty good. This time on Graveyard Cars. This is the first time this has been out of there. Mark and Alyssa discover a mint condition build sheet from a 1971 Challenger. Will finishes the paint for Gibson's FK5 Burnt Orange 1970 Cuda. Mark teaches Alyssa about the second generation chargers. And Bruce Gibson comes to the graveyard to check out the work on his 70 Cuda. But will the ghoul's body and paintwork meet his expectations? Crying. On this episode of Graveyard Cars. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the cranberry dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life, to exactly the way they were on the day they were born. In case you missed it, Mopar master Tony D'Agostino from Tony's Mopar Parts came out to help Mark decide the fate of three mistreated Mopars. Despite its terrible condition, the Super B will be restored because the owner got the car as a birthday gift from her dad, making it one of a kind. The 71 Roadrunner will be sold as is. Finally, the 1970 Challenger will be restored. This incredibly clean California car is not only the perfect car for restoration, it's also the perfect car for Tony's wife, Cindy. Dream maker. So this is really cool. Uh, the guys have been disassembling our 71 Challenger RT. This is a plum crazy car. Really nice, clean, one paint job type of survivor car. I mean, just to give you an example, and I'll talk about the build sheet in a minute. Just look at the condition. They look like they've been restored already. Yeah, absolutely. It's amazing. Look at the condition of that original material. Is that just beautiful or what? What year is this? Uh, 1971. So these are from 71? Yeah, those are wow. from 71. But what I wanted to talk about was the broadcast sheet that's in here. Now, I had you try to decode one a while back, and there was nothing left of it. This is the most mint condition broadcast sheet I've ever come across in my history. Because look at the rest of the condition of the seat, right? It's mint. Everything yeah. is beautiful. Just a little bit of staining down here on this uh, apron area. And the rest of it's like new. So here's this build sheet, which is perfectly in there. This is how they did it at the factory. You might have found this build sheet, broadcast sheet, in the backs of one of the front seats, too. The 71 seats, they have a clamshell that goes on the back of them. They could be in those. Now, I already checked, and there isn't one. So, so far, the only one we found is this one here. There also could be one taped to the back of the glove box. There can be up to four of these, even maybe more in some cases. But oh, I, wow. found, I found three myself in one car. I've also found where they don't match the car. That, that's going down the assembly line, and this gets stuffed into the wrong seat, another Challenger, but with a different VIN number, mm. and you end up with somebody else's. That's why there's online sites about Hey, help me find my broadcast sheet, because we may have the wrong one here. I, I've checked it, it's not, but it could be the wrong one for this car, but the right one for somebody else. Oh, wow, that's cool. So I just wanted to, this is such a birth certificate to the car. This nomenclature validates everything on the car, and in some cases, if it was a Hemi car and big dollar cars, this can add thousands to the value of the car because it is a birth certificate. We don't want to tear this. Yeah. And I want you to lift this one up with your right hand. Okay. Then I'll lift this one up and I'll try to shimmy that out from underneath it. Okay. So get up. Don't worry about hurting the spring because you won't hurt it. Then I'm going to pull this up out of the way. 
and this is the first time this has been out of there, literally. It's, it seems wow. fake because it's so mint, but look at that. And when you get it out, you can actually see the marks from the seats. That's one thing cool. that it's hard to duplicate that. There was some of these going around that were fakes, uh -huh. but they were way too nice. This is the most mint condition one I've ever seen in my life. And you can see that the metal has burned its way through in these footprints. And so the rest of the whole car's story is on this page. So I want you to take this and lay it out nicely. Don't rip on it. Get the book, and I want you to go through and systematically find out what C16 is. I know what it is, but I want you to know what it is. Everything we need to know to put this car back together is on this sheet. Whether somebody likes it or doesn't like it, it doesn't matter. Okay. If the owner wants to put different wheels on it than the ones that are down here, that's fine. But we do know now what it had. Okay. So I'm going to entrust you with that awesomeness. Okay. We'll probably never find another broadcast sheet like that, so that was an awesome opportunity. Once in a while, you'll come across something. That's the first nicest one we've ever pulled out here. Yep. Yeah. The last time you had me up there with like a tweezers and a yep. magnifying tiny piece glass, of... and I was trying to unfold it without ruining it. So Take that into the office. Don't let anybody around you. I will get you the book, and I will set you up to decode that. Okay. Let's do Good this. Job. That's Let's awesome. Do Let's bump this mother. I don't know what that means, I, but yeah, I've had a lot of I'm ready coffee. to decode this broadcast sheet. <laughs> Meek. Is it mint or is it meek? Meek. What is meek? Meek condition. How do you spell that? That's how Andy Crandall called That's it. Right. He called it meek condition. Like M-E-E-K? Meek, M-I-N-K, meek. M -I -N -K, meek. Oh, so like Like a meek, like fur? a soul, yeah. And I said, well, you mean mint condition, don't you? Yeah, so I said meek. He was the first guy to wear his baseball hat back in this country. I don't he also renamed Poppin' a Wheelie, Poppin' a Willie. I got this! Yep, he pioneered all new areas for the Let's culture today to follow. Nowadays, I do use mink and the knocking on the fender that... That's Andy Crandall. He invented that. He's crazy. Yeah. Sandwich! All right. Here we are. Today is the final paint day on our 70 burnt orange Cuda. The car is in the booth, wiped down, tacked off. So it's literally ready to go. It's nice to see him actually spraying the uh, burnt orange Cuda. Uh, he's a little tired, kind of dragging his wagon today. I'm tired. Go ahead. A little bit grumpy, but you know, that's Will kind of expect it day-to-day -day basis. And I get the paint gun hooked up, I'm ready to go, and there's a moth. And it literally flies right over the fender to the other side of the booth. And it went in this little corner and I couldn't step on it. So then I got nervous because you have to kill it right then and there. So what I did is I just took the tripod off the camera, even though it was still running, and I just started kind of jamming it. But we killed it right before I even started painting, so it worked out good. But we're trying to make headway, he's doing the burn orange trying to do the blocking on the uh, firepower here. So, you know, trying to make sure Will doesn't get a day behind because I was already a day behind on it. So we're keeping him, you know, going forward. Just kind of keeping the ball rolling. How many coats are you putting on the uh, burn orange today, Will? Well, it would only be a couple, but then all your areas we got to go back and fix, the breakthrough right. spots. So it's going to take four or five to cover the breakthroughs. Four or five and then three over the whole car. Yeah, is that normal, four or five? Yeah, or is it just on breakthrough spots? Um, the color sucks, so. Yeah. It's, it's a long process. I'm gonna try to have it done by lunch. Okay. But. Right. So I'm gonna go in now, put my second coat of color. I'm gonna take my microphone off, put my music back in, and then probably not coming back out until the car's done in like five to six hours. So you forget how tr transparent the color is till you spray it. So you get in there like ready to go, ready to get it done. Then you realize that you're gonna be here a while because the color doesn't cover for <laughs> So once you realize that, you kind of just settle down and, and just find a nice rhythm. It went really well getting the color done on it. There was no issues, laid down perfect. So looks great. Will lays down the final coat of clear on the Cuda, 
and Mark promptly arrives to dissect his work. So I'm getting ready to do the uh, cut and buff on this car. We got the paintwork all done. Um, just have a mark go over it before I take it in the booth, start getting all cut and buffed. And the owner with this car is actually assembling the car. So once we get the buff all done, it's out of here and the owner can assemble it. Are we putting the decals on it? Uh, this car does get a hockey stick stripe. Are we putting it on? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh -huh. So, so uh, once the cut and buff is complete, we will put the decal on, or Mark will. He's really, really good at that. So uh, we'll put the decal on and put a couple parts and parts and pieces on it and ship it out to the owner. What are you doing? This is how I ch uh, check the reflective value of the paint. That paint should reflect exactly like a mirror, a color tinted mirror. Well, it'll look it'll reflect a lot better once it's all buffed out. Yeah, but at this point I have a scale for pre-cut and buff. I should be able to read all the serial numbers. So anyways, yeah, get the cut and buff done, get the decal on here, hang the hood, hang the deck lid, get this thing loaded up and uh, get it back Frank to the owner. Seven, three, car nine, came out great. six, uh, four, Mark eight, painted this orange color peel seven. On, <laughs> Mark painted this color on the, on the uh, charger that we did. And the car looked great. Uh, this oh, came the out. one I did was perfect. It was messiah. That color on this Frank car, seven, I think, looks three, way better. Six. Color looks. I didn't know Sunkiss painted all, these cars, but that's all. All in all, that's car all looks great. Get it buffed. That's all right. Get it out of here. Right. <laughs> Resistance test. Uh, uh. Just want to get it buffed. I'm not even gonna look. I don't even care what he's doing over there. Just want to get it buffed. Uh, what tip are you shooting with, sir? I'm gonna guess you're shooting with a 1.4 or 1.6. I'd recommend with the 2021 going to a smaller tip, maybe a 1.3, over reducing 4%, not five, not six, not three, 4%. That's gonna get you the finish that my 70 Charger Burn Orange FK5 426 Hemi four speed a34 super track pack over black interior, one of only 56 made came out like. The one you painted three times? Uh, because third time is a charm. <laughs> Why are you Nicely laughing, done. you crazy nervous fool? Three times is the exact number for perfection. All right, so where are you at right now? You've got our Weiss book out. You started decoding. Here's our broadcast sheet, our sacred <laughs> Broadcast sheet. Okay. All right. So I was able to do everything, except for I wasn't able to do the second and third column. I've decoded a couple of broadcast sheets prior in the past. This was definitely the nicest one, the most legible. Uh, Dave Weiss's books make it really easy to decode it. You just go down the list. Um, in the book, the codes are in alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. and you see which one correlates with the broadcast sheet, and it's pretty simple. So starting at the top, the sequence code, the vehicle order number, this is the number in which it was ordered. It had gotten assigned to it at the beginning of the assembly line. This is the actual VIN number itself, so you see that. But that's basically the gist of it is everything is there, and it looks like you've done a good job of decoding it. This is really good for her to know, and I think Alyssa's doing a great job. Beautiful. So you did a good job. What are the wheel covers? What is W21? Is that a road wheel of Magnum 500? A rally 500? with uh, trim rings. Yep. Yep. Uh, that went really well. This is a great opportunity to teach Alyssa more points of detailing. The things that can make a car go from a, a $50,000 car to a $150,000 car resides in how they were built. You get that? Mm -hmm. If it's not on that sheet, then it doesn't belong on that car. No exports. Good job. Cool. Nice. Decoding the broadcast sheet. Make sure that goes in a file and is protected and get color copies of it too. Okay. In case anything were to happen to it. Okay. Good job. It's just a learning curve, you yeah. know? So the more that we can do, the more. You like more, me trying I mean, to learn DJ, ZZ, Boo Boo, and Baba, oh and gosh. Double Nickels, and all those rappers. I don't understand any of those guys. Okay, I got a real job to do now. Oh, thanks. Right now I'm heating the back of these up, trying to get the glue to loosen up a little bit so I don't break them when I take them out but the camera guy really wants me to break them. So that way we can go upstairs and see the nice parts room. But I'm still gonna try to save them because I know that's what Mark would want. I'll have the car completely done this week, put back together, 
washed up. I don't want to break them. I try to save Mark money. You guys cost him money. Yeah, oh, it's perfect. Sorry, I saved one. No reason to go up there yet. See if we save Mark money, he has more money. He is a good check signer. Hot as That's pretty hot. Sorry, <laughs> suck it. This class is in a session. Professor Mark Warman teaching the class. Alyssa, students, bear with me and do roll call. Warman, Alyssa? Here. Okay. What we're gonna do today, class, is we're gonna talk about the second generation of Dodge Charger, the most popular generation of the Chargers, which are what years? 68 through 70. Very good. Made famous in film, the 1970, the movie uh, Fast and Furious, the original car at the end of the movie that popped the Willy. You guys call it a Willy, we call it wheelies, but you guys call it Willy. The 1969 made famous in what motion picture? Dirty Larry, or... You're close. Dirty Harry, Crazy yeah, Mary? Yeah, Dirty Harry, Crazy Mary, right? Clint Eastwood drove one of these when he told somebody to make his day. Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry. And the 1968... Dukes of Bullet, Hazard. Steve McQueen. Oh. All right, what I want to talk about are the differences between them. First of all, did you do your research on the number of cars that were built per year? Yes. Yes. So I'd like to ask you, in 1968, what is the total number of Dodge Chargers? This is everything. This is six cylinders, V8s, Hemis, four speeds, automatics, SEs, everything. What's the total number? 74,886. 1969. 69,142. That less or more than 68? Less. 1970. 39,431. So Almost basically, 40, they just keep getting less and less. That's They're right. far more rare. That's right. Okay. The 68 was the introductory year, and it was startling. If you look at a 66, 67, they look like an AMC Marlin, all right? They were not a great looking car. When Dodge came out with that, it set the world on fire. I mean, that was it. That was what we referred to as the Pantaluma dropper, which is Spanish I, for I panties. I don't know what that means. Yeah, well, that was the action. They called me Action Jackson when I drove one of these, all right? What My does that cousin. Mean, Dad? wanted a 68 Charger so bad. Cousin Dougie, you remember Cousin Dougie? Yeah. Cousin Dougie wanted a 68 Charger, couldn't afford one. So he decides he's just gonna end one and total it and have to buy it because he had no insurance. Weird that doesn't make sense. It makes no sense at all, but that's Cousin Dougie. Anyway, he ended up with a 68 and that was the first one that came into the Old Ham Warman family. If you look at him from the front, you can see the changes in the nose. Now, the least popular of all is my favorite, the 1970 with the looped chrome front bumper. That's the car I had when I was a kid. You think maybe that's why it's your favorite? Because it was the one you had as a kid? Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah, I fell in love with my 70 Charger as a kid and I always loved it and always will. The 69, popular by, again, the General Lee and, and movies like Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry and a multitude of other things, it got this nose piece, this center, still using the same bumper as the 68, but it has this nose piece in the middle. Some people love it, some people can't stand it. 68, which is probably most popular, mostly because of the cool front end on it. That's a very yeah. sleek front end. I mean, of all three of them, isn't that the sleekest of all of them? Yeah, I think so. That's probably your most collectible as well. The 69's probably second most collectible and your 70's last, but all three majorly, majorly collectible. But so there's you, more differences than just the front end. There right? is. There is a lot. And I asked you to look some stuff up. I wanted you to comb the cars and tell me what things jumped out at you as different. The door scoops. Okay. In 1970, they they used the, uh, the same door as they did in 68, except that there is a modification from 68 to 69 in the doors of where they put the door lock knob. If you look at this, see how far back this door lock knob is? Mm -hmm. It was uncomfortable to reach it. Oh, Look in 69, yeah. they moved it forward. Yeah. But the rest of the doors are identical. And of course, they kept this nice convenient spot for the 1970. The yeah. two doors outwardly look the same, but you did get that cool scoop, which was one of my favorites. My car yeah, was not yeah. an RT, but I wished I would have had those. But that's right, that's observant. Look at the side markers. Look at the shape and the finish on the side markers. 1970 
It's, it's getting more bigger. elegant. It's an elongated mm -hmm. side marker. It's chrome. 69 oh, uh, see, is, I didn't know if that's an option to, to that, drum on that No, or not. chrome wasn't. wouldn't have come. It came painted. So that, again, a little less sexy. Also, there's no light in this. This is just a reflector. Oh. That's the first illuminated one. Back over to here. Doesn't. 1968 Dodge Charger has the round one. Again, most people think is the coolest looking of all of them because it's sleek. It's less is more, that yeah. kind of a thing. Before we jump to the interior, just real quick, looking at these three cars, which one do you think is the coolest looking back end? Well, I mean, it's a matter of personal preference. Personal preference. I mean, those kind of, I like the retro round. That kind of reminds you of like the Firebirds. and They the, weren't retro back then, but they were cool back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. I like those, but I mean, I actually kind of like the 70. Are you happy? <laughs> Are you happy? Okay, one broke. So now, since your wish came true and we broke one, I'm going to head upstairs and go to where our light assembly parts and pieces are and grab our brand new box of them because we stock everything. So as you can see, it's all nice and clean, neat and organized. We have all of our extra like bezels and we have you know, other little ones here in case one break. But for some reason, we actually have a brand new box here. So it's our brand new box. It's got two orange ones and two red ones in it. So I'll take these down, put them on my toolbox for now, get the bezels painted, and then stick these in. This is all of our stuff that can't be replaced here. You know, all of our door moldings and quarter interior moldings. This is everything Mark kept that's valuable. Well, I'm glad to get back to work. So here's the main differences. Certainly the 68 uses the round tail lights, the bullet tail lights. Those are just sexy at night. Those things pop on and they light up like four eyeballs looking at you. That's just cool. 69 is still a good looking tail light and it looks very similar to the 1970. Here's the differences. 69 has this chrome trim ring around it. Mm -hmm. 1970 does not. See the plastic lens right there? Oh yeah. Instead, it has this finish panel around here. Okay. So that's kind of a, a, a unique difference. Which is weird they did that when they added more chrome. Right. The 70, but they didn't, they took away the chrome in the back. All three of these cars are RTs, which is really cool to have all three generations of RT on the lot. This is a 426 Hemi four-speed car. Rare as hen's teeth. 440 four-speed RTSE, 440 automatic. RT. You mentioned the ignition. You're very observant. In 1968 and all the years prior, the ignition was down on the dash. All right? Yeah. But I think that they found that that was unsafe and they wanted to move it up to the column. Or they decided that they wanted to be able to lock it and that's how they could combine it with the position of the transmission. So like if you were in park, you could get the key out of it. So this is a 70, so you'd see the key way up here. Yeah. If this is in neutral, mm -hmm. you will not be able to get that key out of the ignition. It has to be in park. Oh, okay. Okay. In 69 and earlier, take a seat in there and look at where it's located at. See it down low? Yep. Yep. That one, you could be driving down the road and shut the ignition off and pull the key out and hand it to the guy in the back seat or you're doing 100 miles an hour if you wanted to. I want you to be able to rattle off every car on this parking lot. I want you to know what the engine is. I want you to know how many were made. I want you to know what the colors are. Every single car, 85 cars on this lot. I want to be able to just point to that and you tell me exactly what it is, what the factory color is, and if it's an automatic or a four speed. Well, Dad, you don't even know those. I'm sorry. <laughs> Every single car? <laughs> Every single car on this lot. You're telling me. I'm telling you that I know what engine, what transmission, and the factory color of it. And model. Really? Really. Anyone? Everyone. You, we can play any game you want to play. I don't believe you. Well, play any game you want to play. It's easy to say that. You want to dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? My suggestion is to drop a quarter in the slot, baby. Drop a, drop a, drop a, drop a quarter in the slot, baby. Know what that means, but I, I really doubt that you know every single one. Like I said, it's easy to stand back and say that, but what are you doing? Hmm. Hmm. What are you? That's how you clear your brain out. That's. 
Let's see 71 it. Dodge Demon 340 Automatic EV2 Tour Red with an orange and black interior automatic transmission. Back. 71 Dodge way. Challenger RT 383 Automatic Factory N96 Shaker Hood and FC7 Plum Crazy Purple. 1970 Dodge Challenger RT 440 right, Chrysler barrel. automatic transmission on it. Actually has the original GTX 440 six barrel four speed from the factory that has had an automatic 1968 Plymouth Roadrunner 69 Dodge Charger Daytona 446 pack automatic Dana Rear and a 1971 Charger 440 automatic. I can go all day long, Jack. What do you want to do? You dart okay, me into well, the you middle of point. Vietnam and I'm going to come out with a pizza. You made your point, but still, when's my birthday? I don't know. When is your birthday? Are you serious? I don't know. You it's know in March, cars right? on this lot. It's when? March, right? That's mom's birthday. I knew it was something. Uh, so I got the whole car sanded out right now. Did the undercoating just in the wheel wells because that's what My curious George. That's what's called on this car instead of the whole bottom being undercoated. Adam? Just the wheel wells. And then I'm going to buff it out. Grandmaster Get it all Ryan. polished up looking nice. And then get it over to you because this car gets the uh, hockey puck stripe. So, oh, it's a hockey puck? I like that a lot better than a hockey stick. What the same thing. So it's just a little <laughs> round puck right here? Yeah. Is it? What yeah. else it call out? It's yeah. like, maybe it's the serenity prayer or something inside of it. I don't know. So I'll get it over to you. It's a hockey stick. And then you can throw like a hockey stick. stick. Like Happy mm. Gilmore? No. Wow. 355,000 yards. I'm not putting the Well, we did the on. first one that didn't work out so good. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And then you did the Roadrunner. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not doing anything. You did the convertible uh, Roadrunner. That came out nice. Oh, you're doing the hockey? Awesome. Uh, no, and I'm not. You, I'm not doing any more well, billboards. Did, I decided just, I don't. You just did this. You're doing them. OK, cool. What are you talking about? You're doing the hockey stick. No. Is that right? She no. just said she's not doing it. Well, I'm not. She's got more experience she more than I do. She's trained at it. I've, I've no, she's got, all no she's got more training than I do. You didn't uh, bring me over. She doesn't. You've been doing it for 30 years. You didn't. I'll just get the car done, get it over to Alyssa on one of her days off, and the car will just sit there, then Mark will just go by and be like, yes. God, I yeah. So take a, take a couple extra days off. That way, he just. You know what? Just text me in the morning. Oh, there you I go. know it's going to be in my department, and then I'll just, I'll be sick. <laughs> yep, sick. Beautiful. You started working for me when you were six. <laughs> six? Six. Ow! And you're you 50 now. You dropped out as well? Yeah. <laughs> his parents bought his diploma. Oh, my <sighs> What is up with, why do you say that about people? So I'll have this wrapped up, too. Give me another day or two, and then I'll get it over there. I'll get it uh, all wiped down, then you can. I, don't I already told you I'm you not doing the billboard. Why are you guys afraid of it? It's not a billboard. Why are you afraid of it? I'm not doing don't do any more decals. decals and paint. So what department is it that does decals here? Yours. I have an idea. I don't have a, de a department. There you do. I'm everywhere. I'm omnipotent. How about you guys do Sorry. rock, paper, yeah, scissors? Else. Didn't get that. Didn't get that out I there. Didn't get Thurston, the M. Did I got the impudent part. You guys could do it old fashioned <laughs> and do rock, um, paper, scissors. Nope. The okay, best I'm two mad. out of three. <laughs> Not impotent. Obviously. Where'd she come from? That was a long time ago. That's 25 years ago. 24. 25. 25 years 25 ago. 25 years ago. So. Oh, I was a machine 25 years ago. Oh my that was my God. name, the machine. Ugh. Oh, so, God, here come the machine. So two more days, Alyssa. Grab your panties, here come the machine. He has a spell. Yeah. You'll do good. I just spray on stuff. I spray. God, Dad. Spray. Like a tiger in the so woods. So embarrassing. Out trying to get some stuff, you know what I'm saying? So this is gorgeous. So take a nice look down the side of it. It should look like a sheet of glass. There should be no deviations or warbles. Just stand back there where I was. Eyeball. Looks good. That's a jaw sound there. Two things are important. One is that it's perfect, and two is that it's done on time, and that's why I've got you out here helping me. Mm -hmm. I'm getting behind on all these cars. That's the truth of the matter. So. I can't keep up with 78 cars that are here all the time, so I'm going to need you to help me do that. Okay. So I want to make sure of them before we call the guy and tell him, and he drives all the way up from Southern California. Oh, well, this is car is definitely not done. This car is not done. I don't know where the hood, the deck lid, the side markers, the vertical lock support, and the other pieces are. Like at all? No, I don't know why they're not in the car. I assume they're down there and they're painted. OK. The other thing, just so you know, while we're here, look at your door lines. They should be about the same. You should have the same thickness of a gap here as you have here. Now, e-bodies are a little bit tough, and we end up having sometimes to make those lines, meaning we'll have to cut that quarter panel and move it back to get a little bit more open line. And that's just the way it is. It's between the replacement sheet metal and the fact that the cars aren't virgins anymore and the fact that they were never built perfect in the factory. But when we're done, that is a really nice set of lines right there. Yeah, that looks really good. <laughs> 
So here's what we're missing. We're missing a hood. This is a Shaker N96 car. Okay. What's the alphanumeric code for a Shaker in 1771? N96. November 96. Uh, side markers. Now you'll notice that this upper cowl is blacked out. Yeah. You know why that is? No. It was mandatory on all of this 1970 Cudas that they get blacked out up there unless it was black or I think B7 blue because that was dark enough. They didn't want to see body color through there for the same reasons they didn't want to see body color through the grill. So if you stand around there and look, you see all this is blacked out. Yep. They don't want you looking through those and seeing body color. They want it to look like it goes forever, just like a dark shadow. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's blacked out and that's why the cow's blacked out. 71, they didn't care. They pulled that out, it's no longer mandatory. I've just finished painting everything for the car, minus the hood and the header for it. Those are our final two parts. And since the car is over at Dave, my part's already done with the body of the car. So we're just waiting on Mark to put the uh, hockey stripe on it. Uh, the hockey stick, hockey, whatever. Hockey stick stripe. He's still gotta put that uh, billboard on, decal on. And then in the meantime, I'll get the header painted and the hood painted and the car's done. Uh, the paint's not, not real fancy on this as far as uh, a high metallic or, or hard to spray. You know, it's orange, we'll do it in a single stage. So with the rest of the parts in there drying right now, they'll stay in there for the day. I'll come in on Saturday or Sunday, spray the hood, the header, so when Mark comes in on Monday, we set the deck lid on, we set the hood on, he throws a stripe on it, and the car's done. After months of body work and a beautiful paint job by Will, it's time for Mark and Alyssa to install the iconic hockey stick stripe on this FK5 1970 Cuda. This is the final step before Bruce Gibson arrives to pick over and hopefully pick up his passion project. Uh, I've been working with Alyssa a lot lately on things around the shop. Uh, one of the things I'm hoping that she'll be able to do more of and I'll be able to do less of is the installation of the graphics. Nobody wants to do them. They're tough, they're easy to make a mistake, they're expensive, and I'm difficult to get along with when you do any of those things. So, uh, so I'm training the one that I can pick on the easiest. All right? Lucky me. No labor laws when it comes to family. No, I don't you know think that's true. <laughs> I think it is. Uh, anyway, we're getting ready to put the hockey sticks on the 1970 Cuda. Before we do it, before we start putting them on, I know basically where they go, but okay. we have a 1970 Cuda 383 four-speed car out back that's all original paints. Tor Red car, EB2, you knew that. Yeah, of course. And it's an original V6X car. So we can go out, let's take, you got your notepad, good yep. girl. Okay. So stand back here and soak it in. Soak it all in. I want you to stand right there. I want you to pay attention to this line right here. Many people make the mistake when they put these graphics on of getting a rake to them so that this is all kind of clocked like that. Mm -hmm. No, this should be parallel with this line here, is it? Yes. When you look at it, Yep. that's what you have to do. That's why I cut them apart is to make sure I get that. Okay. Sometimes these come with the backing paper over all this. I take them apart so I can get the top one on exactly where I want it, the middle one and the bottom one, because it should be as close to parallel with that body line as humanly possible. Okay. So all we're gonna wanna do is if you take a look here, here's the style line of the car. See where right here it starts to go that way? Yeah. This outline. So we need a measurement, and it looks to me like about a quarter of an inch, but go ahead and bring me your tape measure. Yeah, I say the close at the closest point, that's what you wanna do, at the closest point at the back of the hockey stick is a quarter of an inch from the style line. Let's go into the middle of the hockey stick from the top of the quarter to the hockey stick just above the last three. And then at the front, at the very, 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 very front, we've got one inch from the style line. So we put this one at one inch, we put this at seven eighths of an inch, and then we build the rest of them around it. Alrighty, so let's set, let's open the door. What you wanna do is, this decal is gonna sit off the end of it, and you don't want it sitting on the door where it could get stuck down. It just needs to free float out here. Okay, okay. I remember that from the other ones we All did. Right. So I want you to put me a piece of tape at the one inch mark, okay? All right, second. It's a little crooked. Okay. And then we had the hockey stick. So we got our tape line out. Let's uh, 
Let's lay this bad boy out. I'm gonna hand you that while I put the app gel on. This so that's the only place we're gonna mark those, just that one? Yeah, I got I got a pretty good visual on where it goes, so. Okay. Just keep, let the kid go, let the kid go. Well, I'm trying to learn. Well, I know, but you gotta, I'm, I'm gonna you show you why. Me? I'm gonna show you something. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna teach you as I go, young weed hopper. Okay. Grasshopper. Okay, take that off of there. Oh, this is where I screwed up the last time, right? All sure? right, so that's because you guys got it wet. Okay. All right, so just let me see it. I'll take this in, you take that in. Down there, hold it up off the ground. Go ahead and pull that away from it. We're just gonna plop her up there. I'm gonna set that there just gingerly. Gingerly. This needs more of a gap right here. So we gotta bring this down. Put your finger at the front. It's better, I think. Yeah, it's better. It's better. How much are a set of graphics like this? About $200. Get back. I just need room. Kind of scared to help. Seem a little tense. Okay. I think it looks good. All right. So if the next thing that came in would be the 440, see what it fits like in there. Fit. That's nice. That's pretty close. Yeah, I think it's just above that style line. Just want to kind of walk around it, and look for any last minute air bubbles that might be underneath it. And if you feel you don't have any, you want to be careful when you're pulling these off that you don't cause problems. So we have our hockey stick stripes installed on our 1970 Cuda. Alyssa, good job helping me. Uh, I think that the car came out beautiful. That's a nice contrast. This car doesn't have a lot of stuff on it, and that's just the problem with the 70 Cuda, really, the hockey stick stripe. Uh, you could have had a rear spoiler, you could have had rear window louvers, but this one didn't. So I think that's a really nice, subtle little accent for the car. Looks good, it looks solid, looks powerful, screaming out that 440 right there. So yeah, almost done. More room at Graveyard Cars. Now that the 1970 Burnt Orange Cuda's classic hockey stick stripes are perfectly in place, the ghouls kick into high gear. Installing the hood, deck lid, trim pieces, and rocker moldings then buffing, polishing, washing, and rushing this car into the assembly room. Just in time for Bruce Gibson to check out his gorgeous FK5 Burnt Orange Beast. You like that? You like those moves? There is uh, your baby. Wow, uh, I'm Bruce Gibson. Uh, I'm here today to, to get my car picked up. Mark's been working on it for a year and a half, something like that. I don't know if it looks any uh, different uh, at all from when. That's completely <laughs> night and day difference. Holy crap. Is that just amazingly gorgeous in person? Wow. It was a driver car. It was in decent condition to look at. We knew it had a little bit of rust in the trunk, so uh, I stripped it on down. Uh, upon getting it stripped down, it turned into a lot more than, than what it originally was. But it was still a V-code CUDA, 446 barrel, four-speed track pack car, so uh, with a shaker, so pretty special car to begin with. That is beautiful. Sometimes pictures look great, but then you get in person and they say, wow, it actually looks better in person than it did in the pictures. You know, Bruce, that is one fantastic, beautiful car. Yeah, we got uh, we got great lines on them. Uh, these are these are always tough, you know, because the, the header panel kind of isolates you to what you can and can't do. But uh, right now, the way we've got everything adjusted, you won't have to do any door adjusting, hood adjusting, or deck lid adjusting. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> we, we load the door up just a hair, so when you open it, it comes up a hair. That way, when you get your door glass and everything in and it'll, it's settled, it'll just be a... Beautiful. 
Wow, that's, that's stunning, that, <laughs> that paint job on there. I watched the episode where they sprayed out the color for the FK5 on the, the Hemi Charger, and that really sparked my interest because it seemed like everybody, I've seen a lot of these FK5 cars and they just don't get the color right. This one was a repaint and it wasn't right. A lot of people say, why are you painting them twice? And this is why, the end result. The first one you get to see all your flaws, all your problems, anything that can, can bite you, but it also lays down a substrate that is better than any primer in the world. Clearco's the best bridger in the world. So then you come back later and sand it with 400 on a long block and lay out a beautiful base clear. It doesn't shrink in, it doesn't shrink back, it just glows. And that's that's how you get that mile deep look. Yeah, on this car. Yeah, yeah that is yeah, that's beautiful. beautiful. You know, I've been drawn to the six pack motors. A friend of mine had one and grew up with it. And uh, so then I started looking for a muscle car and then started looking for a six pack or six barrel car. and. Uh, and finally stumbled across this one, and so it's evolved to this this stage now. So fender tag on it. Yep, That's got your beautiful. fender tag. One screw painted, one chrome. They're the original okay. stainless because they rolled that up when they painted it. That's your original tag. Absolutely beautiful. Marked and great to work with. Uh, really been excited about the process. Just just fantastic the way he handled everything and the way the transition went down. Just really pleased with it. The underside of it. This is the first one that we've done also in the. The gray. The, sure, we have over, like the over yep. Yep. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was wanting. Put it back to as original as we can. Yeah. So I'm, I'm into the whole numbers thing, date codes on everything. Yeah. It's amazing how many date codes are on this car. Mm -hmm. When I watched your episode a couple weeks ago, you were showing the Hemi carburetor and the part number and the date yeah. code yeah. and the fuel pump, and I was like, now he's talking my game. Right. Right. There. <laughs> right. That's, that's the world I'm living in, so I really found that. And that's what, yeah, if you've got a real thoroughbred like this, that's all numbers and it's a real six barrel car and four yeah. speed and all that, you do want to take that time. Yeah. You definitely want to take that time. It'll be a show car trailer cream for a little while and, uh, you know, probably do that for a few years and then probably drive it some and, and just enjoy it for the next 10, 15, 20 years, whatever it is. So. Now that Gibson can take his car home to complete the restoration, the ghouls can check off another job well done. Alyssa was able to add more knowledge to her second generation Charger database and learn to decode a 71 Challenger's build sheet. Will laid down perfect paint with one of the most difficult colors to spray, the very transparent FK5 burnt orange. And Mark laid down the law with his adroitly installed hockey stick stripe. Maybe he'll let Alyssa do it next time. Maybe. Oh, I am so excited to get this <laughs> home and start putting it together. You have no idea. First thing you're going to do is call all your buddies. Uh, they got to uh, come over and look at it. Oh, uh, yeah, they've already, yeah, that's already happened. And take a little happened. credit for as much as you can, because yeah. that's a guy thing, right? That's right. Oh, you know, I, they asked me if I want to come up and paint it. I uh, 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 <laughs> told them, no, you know, I'll let Will have a little yeah. limelight, you know. <laughs> Oh, Everybody's come over and help you put the paint job on there. <laughs> you know, this is a really cool little car. I mean, obviously, 446 barrel, my favorite colors. You got your FK5. Uh, it's a bit unique to graveyard cars in as much as the scope of work is different. N normally now, of course, we'd move over to Dave's area after the body paint's done. It would get the final assembly on it, engine, drivetrain, interior, everything would be built out. And we'd finish another person's dreams. In this particular case, uh, Mr. Gibson wanted us to build the foundation for it, do the body and paint, the stuff that we're so well known for, and then he's gonna take it himself and finish the build out. As for me, in some ways, it's a good thing because it's uh, another set of taillights down the road and more room at graveyard cars.